What up, it's Dramos on today's show. Following up with Blackout Tuesday, we'll celebrate some black entrepreneurs, DJs, and producers who go by the name of Coco and Breezy. We'll talk Kanye for president. We'll also talk about Central Park Karen getting charged. Uh, and unfortunately, man, we'll talk about a story that I feel like a lot of media is not covering right now, and it is one of our own U.S. soldiers getting murdered right here on our very own soil. It's what the world is now. Let's do it. What the world needs now, the first ever late night show for the people by the people. Um, as per usual, though, man, I want to put some positivity in the air before we do anything. Um, today's quote comes to us from Nas. The quote is, if you're scared to take chances, you'll never have the answers. And I love this one, man, because the reality is, you know, you don't know what you know until you actually go out there and learn something and try something. And, and a lot of times when it comes to educating yourself, when it comes to getting things done, when it comes to making things happen, it means putting yourself in positions that you're not used to. I mean, that's the idea of growth. Um, that's the idea of achieving new things is new circumstances, new fundamentals, new ideas and new teaching. So you got to put yourself out there. It's scary to do so, you know, sometimes. But, you know, real growth and real action and change don't come from you doing the same things over and over again. So, you know. Put that fear to the side, man, and, and take some chances towards the things you want to do today. But with that said, man, uh, whew, 2020, what the fuck is going on? 2020, it just keeps getting more and more strange, I feel like, as the, as the days go on. Um, I know we saw Kanye announcing his uh, his his presidency, um, and then he just actually dropped, uh, as we record this, he dropped it today. Um an interview with Forbes and he was basically laying out, I guess, his plan and and, and how he was going to be running and, and all that good stuff. Um, so he's saying as of now, he's going to be running as an independent with his own party that he's calling the uh, the birthday party. Um, so yeah, 2020 just getting even more weird and weird. Kanye decided to just fucking throw himself in the, in the mix and make shit even uh, you know more odd for the rest of us. The irony is that he still hasn't filed the proper paperwork to actually run. Um, and he's passed the deadline in four states in the U.S. to actually even file that paperwork. Um, so obviously for a lot of people, I just feel like this is another Kanye West attention grab, um, probably at the, the worst times uh, you know, possible. Ice Mees, you said uh, it's really hard to take him serious. Yeah, I mean, he just sounds crazy. Like, it, it's really kind of productive, everything. And then he also went on to even say that he no longer supports... Um, Trump, Ms. Booba, what do you mean you don't know how to feel about this? Um, I've actually seen some people being like, oh, maybe I would vote for him. You've had like Elon Musk uh, backing him. There was another comedian, I can't really remember his name, um, talking about he, he's all for it. Coach Queen, you said uh, it's ridiculous. Jade, you said this is uh, going to help Trump get right into office and then the world is going to go. Yeah, uh, going to implode. Yeah, I mean, that's the fear, I guess, is that like what if it starts taking away from people, you know, voting for, for Biden to get Trump out of office? Um, I, I would hope people are smart enough to, to not go ahead and do so. But, you know, uh, I, I guess we'll, we'll have to wait and see what happens, man. But also, as usual with 2020 right now, man, just keeps getting worse and worse. Uh, China reporting a case of the bubonic plague. Um, so they uh, shut down parts of Mongolia um, after a reported case of the bubonic plague this week. Um, and I actually did some research because I feel like the Internet is also trying to make us go crazy right now. The internet is is like, uh, you know, pulling up old stories of things and like pulling up all kinds of crazy ass shit for us to like get fearful of. Um, so I did some research on like the bubonic plague just to kind of maybe, you know, bring myself some calm and hopefully helps you. Um, apparently, it's always like been around. It does. It's not something that goes away. It's not like this new plague that's going to kill all of mankind. Um, in the U.S., apparently one person a year dies from the bubonic plague um, and at least seven people get it. There are antibodies for it. I'm sorry, antibiotics for it. Um you know, I don't, I don't know. So I think they're just trying to scare us. Ice Mees, you said uh, machine gun <laughs> mosquitoes coming next. I, at this point, bro, I don't even know what the fuck, you know, but like what else could possibly be coming at us? Like we're seeing different things in the news. But I also think we got to be careful um, because like what's happening right now, uh, meth gators in Florida, JD, yeah, that's next. Uh, what's happening right now, too, is like the media is trying to send us into a frenzy and like the media, I'm including social media in that as well. Um, because we're also pulling up like these old stories to like scare us. Like, I don't know if everybody saw the giant bat in the Philippines, um, that there was a picture that was released of that, that, you know, was creeping everybody out. Um, apparently had a five and a half foot wingspan. 
So this picture, though, I did like a little bit of research, um, and it, it was originally posted on Reddit a couple of years ago. So it's an old, an old one. It's not like a new uh, breeding of a of a bat here to scare us. And then there was also, um, I know everybody's like predicting the uh, the aliens are going to be coming next. And I, I saw uh, a story of um, like a meteor f hitting India or flying above India. It had like the green, a green light was coming from the sky. Um, and that was posted on a blog like this past week. And that shit was from 2017. So I, we just got to be careful in the stories that we're reading, um, you know, as far as like in, in social media and all that kind of stuff. Um, Jade, you said debunking the BS. Yeah, I mean, it's scary because... The reality is, you know, any one of these blogs could post something or somebody could post something on Twitter and then like the rest of the Internet runs with it. And, uh, you know, we start feeling like, oh, shit, like the world is, is ending even more right now. It's like as if we need one more thing to worry about. So definitely, you know, just like be careful, fact check your stuff. Don't let yourself go get too crazy when it comes to to all these things. Although the killer bees thing that went away really quickly. But I guess that was like a real a real new thing from from all the research I had done on it. It just was in like a small part of, uh, of the country. But with 2020's bullshit aside, man, let's um let's get into some good stuff. Talking about the good in the world, you know, uh, Central Park Karen. I'm sure everybody remembers Central Park Karen. She's the the white woman who called the police on a uh, a black man who's bird watching in Central Park. She has actually been brought up on charges now um, for filing a false claim, and that's um I think she actually has a law named after her now in New York as well. Um, where where she's uh where you know if somebody calls the police for a false claim they can be charged she has been charged now for for filing a false claim so hopefully this is kind of the start to uh you know people beginning to to check themselves and and stop doing the bullshit knowing that there are consequences when they call the police on somebody unnecessarily and and you know uh as a byproduct of that put somebody of color in danger you know um coach queen you said as she should absolutely uh jade you said um she needs to go ahead and do time and think about her ac her actions and time out. I agree. And what's crazy is the man who she actually called the cops on, he said he will not be um, a part of the court case. He kind of feels like she suffered enough at this point. Um, he's a little nicer than I am, to be honest with you. I think somebody like that, man, who, who knows if she doesn't, you know, kind of feel some sort of consequence from this, who knows where that could have led. Um, and again, the, the climate of, of where we are right now when it comes to people of color and, and the police, you, you know, it's if we can avoid having to have those interactions, man, we, we definitely should. Um, let me see. Uh, Ice Mees, what did you say over here? I think it's an interesting conversation. You said, um, so you were told that Karen is considered racist to white women. Interested to know how I feel. You think it's ridiculous. I agree. It's 100% fucking ridiculous. And, and it, it's absurd to even, you know, think about that. Like, you're going to try and... And I, I actually saw somewhere where a white woman was trying to equate the word and the use of the word Karen to the use of the N word, which is absolutely ridiculous. We're talking about uh, a word Karen that is new and, and is calling out, you know, white people for doing dumb things and, and, and freaking out uh, amidst people of color. Whereas we're talking about actual racial slurs like the N word that were used to bring down and, you know, uh, and, and were a part of enslaving a group of people. So they're definitely not one and the same. And it's ridiculous for any white person to claim that Karen is a, uh, you know, racial slur. And that's probably the most Karen thing you can do is, is considered a racial slur. Ugh, you guys get me riled up now. This is supposed to be the good section of the show. For my Latinos out there, Bad Bunny, big congrats to him. He is on the cover of Playboy magazine this month. He is the first male, uh, aside from Hugh Hefner, to ever appear solo on the cover. So big salute to him, man. That's absolutely huge. He's been such a huge representation for, for our community right now. Um, and, and it's been beautiful to kind of see. And, and I know he's getting a lot of flack for the way he dresses. He's on the cover with his, uh, with his nails done and all that good stuff. And people are, are definitely um, giving him a hard time for it, man. But it's a, it's a beautiful thing to, to have somebody out there who, who's speaking on behalf of us and, and really um, doing it in a positive way. So a salute to Bad Bunny. His, his second album actually is the highest selling Spanish language album of all time, which is absolutely amazing. So big salute to him, man. Um, a beautiful, beautiful thing to see. Um, and unfortunately, man, huh, I wish it was all it was all good, but we got to talk about the bad. I know somebody had brought this up a couple weeks ago, talking about Chicago, and we're, we're consistently seeing it growing. I started following it. Um, you know, somebody brought that to my attention. But unfortunately, there's been a lot of shootings happening within our communities um, over the this past weekend, the 4th of July weekend. 79 people shot, 15 killed in Chicago. Uh, 56 people shot, 11 killed in New York. 31 people shot, 5 killed in Atlanta. It's disgusting and, you know, as a community, we're not helping ourselves when we talk about, um, 
you know, when we when we talk about wanting to defund the police and and you know and and have our own uh, you know sort of community policing the neighborhood and things like that, you know, it's counterproductive to those arguments because we're we're now becoming a part of the problem, you know. Um, so again, when we talk about taking ownership of the things we could be doing better. Um, I, we have to put that on display. You know, I know, I know that was a donkey of the day this week. Anybody that, that checked out the breakfast club, um, and it's just a, a terrible kind of thing to see because unfortunately what it does is it begins to feed the other side's narrative that people of color are violent. And then they start wanting to bring up, you know, um, different cases of, you know, black on black violence and saying, oh, this is what the real issue is. And it takes away from what the greater issue is when it comes to systemic racism and why those communities are so impoverished and and lead to this violence in, in the first place. You know, love, we don't see you said the crazy thing about the shooting is that we're trying to blame the defund the police people. But I, all these shootings are happening under these enormous police budgets. Yeah, that that definitely is true. Um, I think what I think the argument is, you know, and I don't, I'm not blaming. I don't think any, I don't. I don't know if I've read people blaming necessarily the defund the police movement. Um, I just think to me, it's like we got to just take better care of each other. Right. We just got to take more pride in, in what's happening right now and recognize the battle that's happening. Because, you know, if we're fighting each other, then on top of that fighting, you know, uh, white supremacy, it's like, how are we supposed to win in, in these wars? You know, and that's kind of what it what it comes down to and what this is going to lead to Um is unfortunately then the police being able to make cases saying, you see, you see, we can't cut the budget because look how dangerous um, these streets are. All these killings are happening. You know, and let, let's be honest, I don't, I've, I've been reading and I've been hearing a lot of things where, you know, police are probably being slower to respond to calls and, and maybe allowing certain things to happen because they want to make a point that they are needed in these communities. And unfortunately, you know, when we do this to ourselves, we give them the upper hand in that sense, you know. Um, it, 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 it's absolutely terrible. Jade, you said, unfortunately, it's not as simple as black on black crime. It's systematic uh, desperation ingrained in people, but accountability needs to happen. I agree 100%. I think that that's like the bigger argument, obviously, is what leads people. It's not about the color of their skin. It is the circumstances that they've grown up in that lead them to act in this manner. It's the hopelessness that they feel growing up in these communities that leads them to act in this manner. But the unfortunate part is as we fight these battles about you know, reform and all of these things, the other side is going to use this as fuel for saying, you know, no, it's not that. It's just, you know, that, that these group of people are violent to begin with. And that's the unfortunate part about this whole thing, you know, which I hate, I hate to see. And that's why we, we got to have accountability, man. We got to have some leaders in our, in our communities that are, that are saying like, nah, this isn't the way, you know, and, and holding these people responsible. Outside of that, man, uh, I do want to also touch on, um, the soldier Vanessa Guillen that was murdered uh, at Fort Hood in, in, in Texas, um, 20 years old. I know this story kind of just um, just broke when I was recording last week's show, so I didn't get a chance to really dive into it, and and I didn't um, I didn't want to you know speak on it before actually being able to read what what happened. Um, but man, absolutely devastating. So this is a 20 year old soldier. Um, who was allegedly killed by another soldier um, who then ended up killing himself when, when police basically cornered him to, to arrest him or talk to him. Uh, she had, according to, to her family, had told her family that she was being sexually harassed by a soldier, didn't name a name. Um, and, and then she apparently threatened the person who was harassing her. And then shortly after that, she went missing. And this was back in April. Um, and they they uh, they just found the body last week. And this is absolutely devastating. I mean, so many people kind of feel like, and I, and I would agree with this after reading things, that the military didn't, you know, take this, uh, you know, as seriously as they should have until, you know, it was too late. Um, you're, you're talking about, one of our soldiers and and the story to be honest with you isn't even getting the attention that it should when we're talking about the mainstream media you know we hear about it here and there but it it should be a lot more public for people who claim that they love their country so much that they take so much pride in it that they're offended by somebody kneeling for the flag how about one of our own soldiers being murdered and being sexually harassed on one of our own bases we should definitely be i think taking that a little bit more seriously as well I haven't saw a lieutenant in the army um, saying that this girl was uh, was basically a complainer um, and that basically the sexual harassment is basically like a part of becoming uh, a part of the the boys club that is the army. So she was she was basically saying this this girl was wrong for complaining about sexual harassment. That was a lieutenant in the army. So obviously this story is pointing out um, 
so many so many flaws within the system and, and love we don't see you're going into a little bit of the details of the case um you said uh they hammered her to death absolutely and then on top of that he the the soldier allegedly enlisted his girlfriend to help dispose of the body and 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 it was so badly um you know uh cut up and and, and decomposed that they actually needed to use her dental records to to identify her so absolutely just just disgusting um sandy Lynn out loud you said did i hear that ignorant karen saying um she deserved to be harassed yeah i agree i think that was actually the lieutenant that i was speaking of um that that said that um coach queenie said they didn't take it seriously they never do until it affects them personally or their career i agree um and i, I think it's it's like this unfortunate thing where uh we the, the branches like this and the police we've seen that obviously now we're seeing with the army their pride is so high that they feel like they just want to sweep things like this under the rug um and and that's such a disservice to the people that are serving underneath them the people that they're supposed to be protecting um and and this country as a whole so i wanted to make sure that i um i, I spoke on that one man it just absolutely absolutely disgusting um and and it just breaks my heart and it's a hispanic woman um you know another person of color uh, a woman you know just being put in a, in a terrible position first of all that in an army base like this nobody sees that she's being uh sexually harassed by another soldier um and then this just not getting the attention that it deserves like why isn't the president speaking about it why are, you know this is absolutely appalling that this would happen in right you know on a fort here in the united states of america the quote-unquote greatest country in the world so i want to make sure I, I spoke on that and and spoke her name um you know vanessa again we 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 mourn you you know it, it's absolutely just terrible um to to hear these kinds of kinds of stories you know it, it's it's heartbreaking oh the bad was so heavy today man i'm gonna quickly go over coronavirus like the shit is still around let's fucking wisen up and start wearing masks i mean 35 states seeing growing numbers uh, of new cases from this last week. The U.S. just set a record for 60,000 cases this week alone. Um, dozens of states have paused or rolled back reopening. It, it, it's just it's just crazy to me. I see people turning this into a political issue about being controlled by the government because you're being asked to wear a mask. Like, stop. Stop. What are we fighting against? Y'all are so, so eager to fight against something. Fight against something like Vanessa Guillen. Fight against... The, the atrocity that happened there and, and that we continue to see in different circumstances. You being asked to wear a mask is not a fucking, you know, taking away your, your civil liberties or anything like that. Like, come on. But let's let's kind of lighten up a little bit, uh, kind of on the same topic of, of what's been going on as a result of the quarantine and coronavirus. Um, let's talk about people having some, uh, some weird behavior during this time. Uh, a lot of people have been posting it, but Britney Spears is like dance routines that she's been doing. Um, on uh, on IG uh, during this whole this whole quarantine and it's question people have begun to question uh, you know if she's mentally healthy if she's being held against her will and it lead leads me to a to a question um, that I want to get people's perspective on because I found it super interesting um, obviously a lot more going on in the world right now that that you know is important but just to kind of lighten it up a little bit um, so. There are some people thinking she's actually being held in her home against her will. So allegedly, she's living under a conservatorship, which uh, basically is something that a lot of people, uh, Jade, leave Britney alone. Uh, love it. You said Britney just in her own world. As long as she's not hurting anybody, she's good. Right. But this is what's interesting about this. So she's living under a conservatorship, which apparently is usually for people who are like in comas or in vegetative states. And it gives somebody else basically like power of attorney to control their finances and like what happens with their lives. Allegedly, she's actually living under something like that, and her dad and her manager control every aspect of her life. So, um, some people are saying that she actually she has the rights of like a ten year old child. So, I'm I, I'm curious about this because I'm like I'm looking at her life like is that if that is true that you have to ask somebody for everything that you do, that is a terrible terrible way to live. I don't care how much money you have, but I'm curious what you guys think. Would you rather be like Britney Spears rich, basically you know you have enough money to do whatever the hell you want to do in the world, but you have to ask for permission every time you want to spend your money. Basically, like if it's if you were a kid trying to spend your uh, allowance or, or you know your your sweet sixteen money, or would you rather be like just a regular middle class Joe, but you don't have to answer to anybody. You get to do anything you want. So uh, I'm curious what you know what people's level of dedication to money is when it comes to things like this. What's interesting to me, uh, this also like stems from my interview with, with Theopolis London last week on last week's show. Um, where he was talking about at one time he was making a ton of money. He had, you know, Kanye working with him. He had, you know, cosigns from Jay and all these different things. But he wasn't happy, you know. And and he, it was a lot of times because of the lack of freedom that he was happen having. Where he had to always be doing different things. And he wasn't making money the way he wanted to make money. 
he had to do it in such a weird way of jumping through different hoops and like you know posting burger king ads and things like that like he was making good money but it just wasn't fulfilling to him um and and so that kind of also gets me thinking about success and things like this and it's like what britney's living through right now is like is that like the dream is that success i uh, she said um do you get whatever you ask for or they tell you no though uh, they're allowed to tell you no like they have to approve like if you're going on vacation uh, you want to go somewhere they have to approve where you're going and who you're going with um coach queen you said you'll be middle class with your independence i agree 100 percent with that that's where i'm at where i'm like what what like the whole idea to me about success and money and like even fame because of the access that it gives you is it should be there to give you freedom right like the idea is that all those things allow you to live a life of freedom where you don't have to think about shit you could just do but with somebody like her all that money and, and somebody has to watch over and she has to get approval i don't know man i'd rather just be a normal dude at that point and and be able to live the life i, I want to live you know um jade you said your dedication to freedom so many aspects you're a sagittarius you said uh gonna have to make it for yourself um you cringe though because of that money Ooh, yeah i mean she's definitely sitting on on a lot of goddamn money so he has like the vegas residency the touring um apparently all this like well this uh this uh what is it conservatorship conservatorship i should say um she's been doing this for the last few years so like she made an album under this she's gone on tour under this so all that money is just sitting there and she has to you know get permission to use her hard-earned money which is wild Ice means you said, um, if you think about it, we all kind of live that way. The government dictates what we're able to do uh, to some extent. Yeah, that is true. Uh, I mean, with the taxes they take out of your money and, and, and things like that, I mean, uh, you could definitely, I think, make that argument to a, to a degree. But the reality is, man, she's a fucking adult with kids and a multimillionaire. And somebody's telling her when, when she can't do something, like who she could have over and all those types of things. I don't know, bro. I don't think all the money in the world would would allow me to want to give up my freedom and my ability to to kind of do whatever the hell i feel like doing uh on a regular basis that that's kind of rises them uh when it comes to that stuff you guys seem to be the the in agreement with me on that one but jd said but leave britney alone to her dance routines all right we're gonna we'll we'll do that well that'll be the moral of the story is leave britney alone man if she wants to uh look crazy on on, on the web and and is posting all kinds of weird dance videos to songs that you can't really dance to you know, more power to her. But, um, you know, <laughs> Dante says she's going to be shaving her head against you. That's fucked up. Uh, but, yeah, more of the story, I guess, with that, man, is most people will choose their freedom over the money. And I can't, uh, I, I got to be on, on that side, too, man. I, I'd rather have the freedom. And even if I'm kind of, you know, I'm having to plan out what I want to do and not have millions in the bank, at least I know I can, you know, move at my own accord. Um, <laughs> JD said she needs to stay in the house. The real talk coronavirus. 100%. I would agree with that. I think that's a good a good uh ending place right there regardless she should be staying her ass in the house just like the rest of us should be but a uh, big thank you to my live digital audience i appreciate you guys thank you so much for tuning in if you want to be a part of the conversation we record every wednesday at 12 noon eastern time right on ig live so you can join in and with that said let's uh get into my interview with this week's guest coco and breezy all right, tonight's guests are DJs, producers, and entrepreneurs whose eyewear company has been supported by icons like Nicki Minaj, and they've even collaborated with the GOAT Prince. They now have a new single combo out right now. Coco and Breezy, welcome, welcome. Oh, thanks for having us. Yeah, we're excited to, to chat with you. There's so much to, to talk about. First and foremost, how you guys been throughout this, this whole kind of, I guess, quarantine experience, and then now this whole, man, I guess, civil rights movement that we're living through as well. To be honest, it's been a, an emotional roller coaster to be transparent. Mm -hmm. In the beginning of quarantine, um, which was March, which was March, we were we were so used to always being so busy. So being yeah. at home, we just had to create new habits, and it was a little tough emotionally. But then we kind of like start figuring it out, and then boom, we get hit with like we got hit with something that we knew about and that we were mm -hmm. very well. With. We started to like come off the surface. Mm -hmm. And so pretty much with us being in a civil rights movement, we that we take that way harder than quarantine, like especially because we're from Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Like we grew up in Minnesota. We um, we used to go to the corner store that George Floyd got like he was killed right in front of that corner store that we went to all the wow. time. And I think it brought up childhood like racism that we went through that we dug so deep. Mm -hmm. that we were taught to just ignore it and normalize it mm -hmm. and just imagine like a can of worms because like when you're just trying to hide it because you know if you explain it no one's going to understand and mm -hmm. now that we're like okay people actually want to listen mm -hmm. all this shit is like just coming out 
to yeah. yourself. You're admitting it to yourself, and then you're talking about it to other people. Yeah, I mean, that that's so crazy. I mean, first of all, just being women of color, and I think just being a human being in general, you're going to be affected by what you see. But then it, it hitting so close to home for you guys, it being home. Um, and I, yeah, I have read that, you know, you guys definitely experienced racism growing up and, and, and you know, feeling like outsiders and, and things like that. Man, it, it, it's crazy, but I, I think at the same time, it's definitely exciting to a see people like yourselves climb out of those situations, you know, and to be able to tell your story. And that's why it's so inspiring to to hear your story. And, and I, I think also maybe being overly optimistic, I think this moment, obviously long overdue, but we're, we're going to hopefully, you know, now start seeing the change that this world is needed to see. And, and it'll be a better world for, you know, the, the next generation. Exactly. Yeah, I have a lot of hope. I, I have hope because we're not stopping. No one's stopping. And now um, conversation is starting to turn into action and more mm -hmm. conversations are starting to happen. So I think that's the important part for us to all remember and see is that now we're opening up uncomfortable conversations mm -hmm. and being comfortable being extremely uncomfortable. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to dive into this more, uh, you know, from your perspective, especially being the eyewear business. Um, but let, let's kind of backtrack just a little bit to, to kind of like your beginnings. I know you guys have definitely told this story a lot, uh, you know, recently, we've been a lot of press and things like that. So I don't want I don't want you guys to get bored telling it. But just for my audience, you know, just for anybody that might not be super familiar. I mean, you guys have a pretty interesting kind of way that you came up, uh, you know, and created the, the whole eyewear business that you guys are doing. I mean, uh, the original passion for it was because we got bullied in Minnesota. That was our love for eyewear. Mm -hmm. And we grew up in a household with like our our dad grew up during segregation. That's like one generation ago. And then our mom grew up in a very sick Puerto Rican household. Mm -hmm. and so both of them didn't have levels of freedom. And so when they mm -hmm. said when they had kids, they weren't going to repeat the same habits. They're going to raise Coco and I to be like free spirits, be true to who we are, to really embrace our being unique and being individualist. But what came with that was also being bullied like in high school, middle school, and we gained this like level of insecurity and glasses. We would say glasses kind of like saved us and they gave us this level of confidence. And the beginning story is that like we moved to New York with like less than a thousand dollars. And when you think about it, as a kid in Minnesota, our biggest dream was to move to, New, to, York. Move to New York. <laughs> so when we accomplished, like when we moved to New York with less than a thousand dollars, we accomplished what we thought was the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. And like within like a couple months, we had Nikki wearing the glasses, Kelly Osborne. And so we had to kind of re-challenge ourselves. And again, not seeing other people in our family with businesses. We're like kind of on path figuring it out ourselves. Talk to me about that time though. I want to like really hone in and get a feeling for like where you guys were at at that time. Because if I'm not mistaken, the story goes, you guys are making sunglasses for these big celebrities on like an air mattress uh, yeah. in, in your apartment in Brooklyn. So like, talk to me about that, that period of time. Like, how are you guys making ends meet? How are you keeping the lights on? How are you funding this passion at the time? So at, at that time, time, it was literally just like, it was, you know, we were, there were safety goggles. We had studs and spikes, so it was very DIY. Mm -hmm. So whenever we get an order, we just use that money and put it back into like buying materials. Mm. But what really helped us get off the ground, which I always thank this person who's very special and she was so ahead of her time. Her name's Angel. And I, mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember the platform called Concrete Loop, but mm -hmm. Concrete was like one of the like first. 2010. 2010. It was like one of the first like blogs that was talking about black culture. And I would never forget, we never, we didn't know how we were gonna like pay our rent. And she was like, you know, I'm gonna do an article on you guys. And that is what really got a lot of people to like know who we were. And so that really shifted for mm -hmm. us. And from there, it was just, you know, history after that. Yeah, Obviously with a lot of downs. Of course. I mean, that, that's amazing. I think one of the things that stuck out to me when I was like reading about you guys was just the level of discipline you had. Do you talk about, 19 year old kids from Minnesota moving to New York like most kids would probably go crazy like trying to be out partying all the time mm -hmm. and, and doing these different things but you guys were talking about just how focused you were keeping your head down and just being frugal with your money and and, and having this greater you know vision uh for what you wanted for yourself so I mean talk about how you kind of develop I guess that mindset of discipline and how you stay true to it to to not get sucked into like the lifestyle that New York can bring so Coco, anyone who knows Coco and I like we're still like that now we're still like that we're still <laughs> We're not, we're not easily persuaded. Yeah. We're not really peer pressured at all. Like when we have a, a goal, we do whatever it takes to go for it. Mm. So even now, yeah. like, you know, it was funny. We were talking to one of our friends. His name is Sean Ross. He's a, like a supermodel and music artist. 
And he would just say how he remembers when back in the day, and even up until now, like when our friends were going to the club, we were in the kitchen at our office, like working. Like the kitchen was the office back then. Right. And they would leave at 10 o'clock at night, come back at 4 a.m. And we'll guess be who we were? Same place. Still in the kitchen, cooking stuff up, you know, <laughs> making glasses. Absolutely. No, I, I love that. Um, I mean, all right, so talking about kind of moving into this next stage of your life, though. So obviously, you guys have, have really been super vocal on, on all that's happening right now with the social justice and, and the importance of, of, you know, representation when it comes to people of color and businesses and things like that. Uh, I think I want to kind of dive into why that is so important, because I, I think what, what a lot of people kind of miss and what I'm sort of seeing is we're seeing a lot of these companies sort of publicly say the right things, you know, that they're, you know, behind the, the Black Lives Matter movement and, you know, and, and put it on their social media and all these things. But the reality is for, for real change and real representation uh, to happen, they also need to put their money where their mouth is and also, also support the communities that are supporting them. Talk to me a little bit about that, the importance of it, and also how you guys talk about the importance of supporting your, your black owned businesses. Yeah, so I, I think the bigger thing is this is a conversation that we've been having even before this. We weren't we weren't having it on social media, but we were having it on set. We were having it, you know, behind like, like, yeah, like photo shoots. At photo shoots, we're having it at meetings. Like if we're on set for a big photo shoot and they have a hairstylist that doesn't do black hair, mm-hmm. that's an issue. And yeah. we've been very vocal about going through that. Or if we're in an optical shop and they are telling us our brand looks too black because we have black and brown models. And we're, like we've been very vocal because we know that we're creating a new path within our industry, especially mm-hmm. in the ivory industry. And if we want, I don't want to hold the title of being the only black woman in all these optical shops that we're in. That's not a fun. I don't want to hold that title, but I know that the only way we're going to change that to include more black owned companies mm-hmm. is to voice those issues. And to also like help open the doors that like were super closed on us. But I, I, it's important that these companies and people don't turn this real movement into only a social media post. Right. But they're actually taking the time out to, you know, like make change inside and also out. Mm-hmm. Because you also see some brands are like, okay, cool. So let me just start posting black models on our Instagram page now. Okay, that's cool. But, like, what does your executive team look like? And so I think it's important for everyone to start doing just more work Mm -hmm. that might seem challenging, but we have to do more work in order to, like, change what has been, like, what has been, like, the regular norm. Absolutely. I love that perspective. All right, so uh, before I let you guys get out of here, I do want to talk about the new single you just dropped. Uh, You guys are also DJs and producers. So you guys just dropped a song called Convo. Kind of talk to me about, like, I guess this other slash phase of your life that you're doing right now, uh, DJing, producing, and releasing music now. Yeah, so we're excited. It's so pumped. I'm so stoked because we took, like, we took, like, a year. It took us a year to make that song, mm-hmm. and we took a lot of time to really find our sound. I was low-key a little nervous at first because, you know, we're, we're Black women, Afro-Latina women, but Black women in the electronic dance world. And when it comes to, you know, dance music, there's been for a long time representation of one sort of person, which you see a lot of white men dominating the space. What I do think, I think when it comes to our community as well, what I would see, I would love to see even like at the BET Awards for them to also highlight black people in, in EDM and house mm. music. I love black that. people aren't just hip hop. Yeah. So I think even in our spaces, it's, it's time for us to like, Time for us to also embrace that on top of the the mass space of, of electronic music mm-hmm. and dance music, it's time to show representation. Yeah, because we're trained. I mean, I'm Puerto Rican, so we're like we're, we're trained to think that that's white people music. You know what I mean? Uh, and, yeah, and just, yeah, that's a crazy concept to think that even that a genre of music is only specific for one type of people, and especially yeah. like you're saying, like a genre like EDM where the roots do come from uh, from Black culture. It's incredible that it's kind of come to this point that we don't see that representation anymore. You know, it's terrible to see. Yeah. yeah. Um, anything else people should know? Where can they check out the eyewear? Any other music you got coming out that you want to promote? Anything like that? Yeah. So you can check our eyewear out at Coco and Breezy dot com, and our music stream it on all platforms. Just look up Coco and Breezy, and then social media Coco, Coco and Breezy. <laughs> and- <laughs> We'll be dropping some new stuff soon. And I also just want to end it off with just like telling people that if you are, 
an inspiring um like creative, creative whether it's a musician or entrepreneur it's a stay like stay strong and it sounds so cliche but through everything that we're going through it's really easy to it's easy to give want to give up but i would always tell people to give yourself the flexibility to go through a plan a through z so i think a lot of people are so stuck in their stuck in their ways of comfort and you always want to be comfortable with the idea of being uncomfortable yeah i love that that's amazing that's a bar right there that's a good way to end it Again, I appreciate you guys so much. <laughs> Convo is out right now. Coco and Breeze, you guys are amazing. Best of luck. Um, and hopefully when this is all over, we can connect in person. I'll come out and check yeah. out a set or something. Thank yeah, you so thank much. You so it's such much. a pleasure. Thanks for having me. So normally uh, here, I would uh, kind of leave, leave you with um, a piece of just inspiring advice or a perspective that I got from maybe doing the interview. Um, but I want to do something a little bit different today because I think it's important. So I've always said that, you know, a big reason why I want to have a platform and I want to have a voice is to be able to uplift and pull up others that I feel like, you know, um, are doing some incredible things and give them a voice and give them a platform as well. So that's what I want to do this week. Uh, my brother, Ice Mees, um, who I've actually never met in person. We just linked on IG. He's just an incredibly talented and gifted person. Um, he put out a song and, and video that uh, I really feel like everybody needs to see. It really captures, you know, all that's happening in the world right now. Um, it just has an amazing positive message. And with that said, man, I'm gonna let my dude Ice Me's uh, deliver these final words uh, for this week's episode, you know, via his his music. The song is called The BLM. Absolutely amazing, inspiring. Uh, salute to him. Thank you all so much. Remember, it doesn't have to be lonely at the top. Appreciate y'all. See y'all next week. Ice Me's. Let's do it. It's a shame that... Our fathers and mothers are killed, and we can't even see them anymore. That's right. It's a shame that we have to go to that graveyard and bury them. And we have tears, and we shouldn't have tears. We need our fathers and mothers to be by our side. News tonight in the shocking case of an unarmed African American man who died after being handcuffed and then pinned to the ground yeah. by Minneapolis police. Look, now it's time to stand up, cause they gon' shoot us with your hands up. Just cause they don't understand us, I told them this our land too. A human being, I'm a man too. And that's the reason I don't hate you, so tell me why you hate me. You suffocate me till I can't breathe. You spraying Mason till I can't see. I only came to spread peace. So why you pulling out a lead piece? Every night my mama can't sleep. She hoping that her son's safe. Cause he might end up on the front page. And they gon' say he had a gun case. Yeah, you gon' see it someday. I swear it gotta be a different way. These politicians so disengaged. They don't know the way we feel. And won't believe that the hate is real. Another day, another nigga killed. That's why my people kneel. Protest being peaceful still. But you still won't let us live Look now it's turning violent And it's your fault cause you ignored the problem Now we left without too many options Probably about to start a riot And all them bills getting set on fire Until you recognize that we survivors I'm a father, I'm a brother, I'm a family man Trying to fix a broken system like a handyman We ain't asking for the change, now we demand Headed to the promised land, I'ma lead them there Yeah this song is dedicated to all the families affected by police brutality Or by a senseless act because of the color of their skin Say they names R.I.P. Trayvon Martin R.I.P. Tamir Rice R.I.P. Michael Brown R.I.P. Eric Gardner R.I.P. Philando Castile R.I.P. Breonna Taylor R.I.P. Joseph Godinez R.I.P. Sean Monterosa R.I.P. Mario Romero R.I.P. George Floyd the list goes on, man. But we gonna stand together. Yeah.